Hey everyone. I was asked a pretty intriguing question today about awakening the soul. The question was asked to my co-conspirator, how do we awaken the soul? And for her that was a difficult question because she's pretty much always been awakened. I mean there's lots of ways of describing it but basically being in touch. Okay, I guess when I describe my meaning of having an awakened soul is that your awareness is really increased and that you're a lot more able to live your life in line with your soul's purpose rather than let your mind guide you through life. So she contacted me and said, hey, I don't really know how to awaken a soul. And I went, well, that's a pretty tricky question. How do we awaken our soul? And uh, I have to admit, when I thought about it, and I did have to think about it quite uh, in depth, the answer that I give you now will be very different than the answer I would have given you um, a couple of years ago. So awakening the soul. So I guess the first thing that's really important to realise is that when we're born, as we manifest into a physical form in this life, and we exist, we don't have any information really imprinted on us. I mean, there's some stuff that goes on when we're in utero, in utero where we're receiving information from what's going on via our mother's um, sensory systems through her blood, through the different types of chemicals that are going through her nervous system and endocrine glands. And at high cortisol levels and things like that so we are getting information we also are able to feel and we are able to hear but basically when we manifest into a physical form in this realm we have unlimited potential so there is no limit to the amount of directions we can go there's no limitation whatsoever um, and quantum physics would say that all of these potential potentials here exist until we choose one. But what happens to us in life? Um, as we start to interact with our environment, all of these potentials seem to get less and less available. And what tends to happen is we end up without all of these potentials. And by the time most of us reach adulthood, we're actually living our life in between these things. Because all these experiences have taught us that these things are not possible, or that we don't like them, or they don't work for us. And that can sometimes be conforming, and that can sometimes be um, just survival depending on who you are and what's happened to you. So as an adult, all of those possibilities disappear. Now quantum physics would say that all of those possibilities are always still there. So when we talk about awakening the soul, the first thing I thought about is kind of um, a step ladder. You know, what steps do we take? Like a how to do, if you do this and then you do that and you do that and you do that, do you have an awakened soul? And I guess to a certain degree there are some steps that we can take. But I don't think that they're the most critical thing. I think our ability, because our soul is within us, and these things are almost external things. We're looking for external stimulus to change things. When we come back to here, that soul that we were born with, is always there it never goes away sure some protective things and that might happen and we build up layers and more to the point is we become conditioned to use our brain rather than look inwards here to, to our soul or our heart for our purpose we're taught that uh, this wonderful thing that exists within our head is the thing that should direct our lives and the more we do that, the less we do that. So 
now to, to basically answer the question, how do we awaken the soul? It's not so much what we do have to do as in the steps of one, two, three, four. It's kind of what we don't have to do. It's taking away some of the things that happen automatically, which actually interfere with the soul. So one of those things is um, taking away the power of the brain and allowing these opportunities to exist again. So how do we do that? How do we actually take away the power of the brain? Because in school they teach us that our parents are always saying, oh, look, you're not thinking. Um, we get constantly conditioned from the time that uh, we can start to receive information about do this and don't do that. And it leads to this. So how do we undo that? Well, there are a couple of ways, and probably the very best one is to med use meditation. Um, there are different kinds of meditation. I don't like the, the standard meditation where you try and use your mind to overpower your mind. I, I much prefer the heart, heart math method of um, heart coherence, or actually instead of using the brain as the, the central focus point for your meditation, you use your heart. Um, and you can find things like that online, uh, centering meditations, I've put a couple of them on YouTube, so you can have a look at those. And the more and more that you're able to do this, the less and less dominant this will be. You will have a choice. Now, to give you an idea of how significant living from the mind is, and bear in mind that when we're talking about awakening the soul, we're talking about undoing that, okay, undoing living from the mind, because it's, I think it's virtually impossible to live from the mind and really be in congruence with your soul, because the two will always conflict. You will be in total conflict most of the time. So how do we go about... Um, getting rid of that brain thing. Well, the first thing is the meditations. The more that you meditate, the less power the brain will have because it's not that you can use anything to overpower the mind, but what tends to happen to us when we're really young is um, the, the biggest thing that I've noticed is this wonderful thing called fear. Okay, Something happens to us and it could be something bad or it could be, it's usually grief or loss, and it could be loss of something very simple. We could be talking about loss of having your expectations met as a child, and they deeply upset you, and that really hurts. So your, your mind or brain take control and say, oh, I'm not going to let that happen again, that felt really horrible, so I'm going to build up all these protective barriers, you know, we'll put it in a box, we won't let anybody come near it, and we start living with the set of rules, I'm not going to let that happen, at a subconscious level, we avoid different things, and we act certain ways, and what that does is it, it creates this specific pattern of living, so when you're in the heart, the heart doesn't feel fear whatsoever, that is purely a mental thing, okay, people go, oh, I'm never going to do that again, your heart never says that, your heart never says I'm not going to fall in love again, your mind says I'm not going to fall in love again, your heart never says, I'm not good enough. Your mind tells you you're not good enough. So the first thing is that when it comes to the life, you are number one, and you must love yourself the most. So when you do your meditation, some of the things that you need to be telling yourself are that you love yourself without condition. There aren't any. And if you can't love yourself First and foremost, because a lot of people, what tends to happen is, let this, imagine this ladder that we had of steps to take to try and get an awakened soul. Let's have a look at that. What tends to happen is, if this is a priority order, and we'll actually swap this around a little bit, and we'll make it so it's like a winner's podium. Okay. Top person you love, second person you love, third what we tend to do is we tend to put ourselves around down here somewhere. All these other things in our life come first. It might be our family. It might be our job. It might be 
financial security. And finally, it's us. And that's, that is totally wrong. How can we ever um, have this? Have be in touch with our heart and our spirit and our soul if we devalue ourselves to this point when the reality is, is if we are here, if this is us and we are number one, we're in a far better place to give all of these other things our attention from a good perspective. So I hope that makes a little bit of sense. Anyway, back to this making yourself number one. So meditation, focusing on the heart. When you can love yourself unconditionally and be really courageous, then what you can do is you can be really honest and confront some of those fears. Because you can't overcome a mental fear by using your brain. Your brain put it there to keep control. Okay? All of this stuff here is about the brain keep running the show so that this thing here never gets a chance. Because okay? the brain doesn't want that. The reality is that the soul, this thing up here, is probably one of the most important things that any of us will ever have. And let's imagine the soul. Okay? Think about what happens when we go on a drive. If we haven't consulted a map or we're in an unfamiliar area and we go for a drive, what can happen? Okay, the brain will go, oh, I sort of know where to go, and it will take us on this trip, and um, the good chances we're going to get lost. Okay. And what are the things that we feel when we get lost? Yeah, fear, possibly anger, um, all negative. Okay. So if we live our lives, because our lives are like a trip, we're going from here, where there was all this possibility, to wherever our destiny is meant to lead us. And for most of us, this thing here, the brain, is the thing that's trying to take us there. And for a lot of people, I guess, the brain is really good at setting goals, um, particularly if they're some of these things, you know, financial, or you want a specific career aspirations. That's fine. And you can find all those things. And a lot of people have met their goals in these areas and still find themselves profoundly unhappy. And why is that? Because the brain's got everything it asked for. But the soul and the heart haven't got anything that they've asked for. So, we can't use the brain to overcome the brain. And it's kind of like how we started off this conversation. It's not so much what can I do that's outside me to get to this awakening of the soul it's what do i need to not do okay and what we need to not do is allow the brain to control everything and for fear to be the dominant fear or fear of loss to be the dominating paradigms that we live our life through because they just make us protective guarded selfish uh, angry, judgmental, all the all the negative things that humanity has come from the brain in these emotions. So we've already been through quite a bit. So how do we get rid of that? Well, we discussed the first bit, meditation. Always the best thing. The second thing is the self of value. Okay, put yourself right at the top. Use affirmations of that every day. Simply say to yourself, um, and there are a lot of ways, if you find that these fears and triggers and things like that are coming back into your life, um, look up EFT um, from Nick Ortner, and there's some really good, helpful um, ways of basically taking the power away from fear, short-circuiting that whole response, or else... Uh, you could go if you've got if you go to see a counselor or a life coach um, you could talk to them about that okay but really what you need to do is you have to be number one in your own mirror okay so when you're looking in the mirror you've got to go you know what I am good enough I love you you are very valuable you can be anything you want to be 
is realistically the only thing that gets in our way is ourselves. And I guess that flips over a little bit to control. Okay, so if we look at our lives, quite often we're disappointed about the things that happen or don't happen when we want them to. Okay, how many times in, a, in your life have you thought, you know what, I really want to earn that much, or that person should give me that pat on the back. Okay, how many times have you expected that, not got it, and felt really, really not that good about that? Where do expectations come from? Yep, the brain. Okay, but if you're just simply doing things because your heart wants to do it, and you know that you're good enough, irrespective of whether you get that pat on the back or whatever recognition you need, are you going to be disappointed? A whole lot less likely, isn't it? So really the most powerful tool that you have and awakening the soul is depowering your mind. And that doesn't mean that you become a vegetable. Your brain is perfectly fine. But it shouldn't be your GPS for your life. This thing here should be this heart. The heart is far, far more important. So how does that work then? So normally what tends to happen is this thing, the brain... Tells us where we want to go, tells us where we want to get there. It's constantly interacting with the world to see if we're getting what we want. And when we're not, we're not happy. So how does that work? We're talking about, let's imagine this line here, this red and green, double yellow line, is our internal boundary. And the brain is looking at things outside it, like money, like recognition. Uh, it could be, you know, how many friends you have best buddies, um, it could be, you know, owning the Maserati, it could be the going on, you know, lots of trips, and if they don't happen, the brain's not happy, even if they do happen, and I guess this is probably the most important thing of all, if they don't happen, we're pretty much miserable. Even if they do happen, how long does the happiness last for you? There you go on the trip. How long from the time you get back from the trip until situation normal? How long since the first time you pick up the new car, pull the plastic off the seats till it's just another blooming car? How long of having a bunch of social people that you hang out with we you realise actually these people don't even know me and they don't really appreciate me. How important are these things? Our brain tells us they're very important. It judges our quality of life by them. But the reality is that we can change all that by simply accepting ourselves for who we are. For knowing the journey that we've taken and being really honest about that. Because what tends to happen is if we don't get these things, we blame ourselves. Now, can we, can we absolutely construct and manufacture a job that's going to pay us what we want? Sometimes, um, but you know, a lot of entrepreneurs start big businesses, get a lot, get somewhere and lose it all and have to start again. So somebody that was operating from the brain that didn't operate from the heart, what would that do to them? If that fear of loss, that would be terrible. So these people are courageous. However, if we're living in here and we think about choice, we can't control whether that car's available or not. What happens to that car when we get it? The flight might get cancelled. Um, we might be sick the week we want to go on holiday. We can't control any of the things outside us. So what can we control? You know, if we're talking about our lives, what do we ha have absolute and total control over? And just think about that and see if you can come up with the answer. And so far, the there's only one that I've ever found. 
and that is choice. The only thing that we have total control over in our life is choice. One of the questions I used to like to ask people was, if somebody holds a gun to your head, There's a gun to our head. We'll just draw the head around there. Eyes. It says, you're going to do what I want. Do you have a choice? Do you have a choice? Some people will go, no, he'll shoot me. And I go, mm, okay. But what happens if you say no? He might shoot you. But have you done what they want? So do you have a choice? Who has the real power in your life? Yep, only one person, only you. So this person has made a choice to hold the gun to you and to give you an ultimatum, but you still have a choice. And some people will go, I value my life too much, and they will choose yes. Some people will go, you know what, it's a matter of principle and I don't care what you do to me, and they will say no. And there's no right and wrongs. We're not here to discuss perspective of what's okay and what isn't, because it's your choice. And that's how much power you have in the world. Total power of your choice. None of the stuff outside. None of the stuff, because too many other things affect all of these things. But only one thing affects this choice, and that is you. And I guess the suggestion here is that it's a lot better for all of us when we start making choices from here rather than from here. Well, that's probably enough information. <clears throat> so, what have we got? We've got that most people end up living from their mind. That usually become because of programming and um, conditioning through our systems, through our environments. So school, at home, we get told, don't do that, do do that. Um, if you do that, it'll hurt, or if you do that, you won't be good enough, or you'll be stupid. or So all these conditioning factors start to uh, to happen, and they're not, that's not fair. However, we always have the choice to move from the brain to the heart and start living our life in congruence with who we are as a person. Not what our who our brain thinks we should be, or who our brain thinks other people think we should be. Because I don't know how many of you watching this now have lived your life trying to meet other people's expectations of what you thought they would like. That's not very fulfilling either. Um, if you have any questions about it, post them and I will try and answer them as best I can. I know it's been a whirlwind tour through the mind and the heart or and the soul. Uh, but really the best way to awaken your soul is to disempower your brain. So that's it from me. I'm Braid. It's been fun. Really enjoyed it. Made me think. Um, have a beautiful week. It's nearly Christmas time. Look after yourself. Remember, meditation is your key. Bye.